Good morning, folks. We have several items to hit today, but we're starting at the sun. We have several plasma filaments to watch, and one on the north appears to have erupted this morning. The southern sunspot brightness contrasts with the northern filaments and coronal hole, and watch just left of center on the north for that filament snap. Zooming in on that small eruption here and then looking at stereo A, it appears a small CME was indeed released at Earth. This is way too small to be any concern, but some of those other filaments are pretty huge. We'll continue monitoring them in any sunspot development. Up first in the articles is a new geomagnetic index, one that is superior to the KP index in several ways. First, its 30 and 60 minute update cadence is better, and second, there is no maximum value. While there is very specific and detailed marks for moving among the 0 to 9 range in the KP index, we've taken several KP9 geomagnetic storms in the last few decades, and whether it is a decadal level event, centennial, or millennial super flare, it can't go higher than 9. This does not help us when it happens because we don't know if it's a low 9 or something that would be a 10 if a 10 existed. Now, we don't have that problem anymore with a live index that will be able to give an indication that we are entering superstorm status, which, again, the KP index cannot do. Let's jump back to the galactic magnetic reversal story from Friday. There have been several questions about this, or rather questions slash compliments, where the latter is only half deserved. Yes, that huge story broke Thursday night. Yes, it was already in our new book, which began arriving to you guys last week. But folks, I must reject full credit for stealing the thunder on that one. Remember how many professors and NASA scientists have begun to see what's happening. They are on our team, and yeah, when someone like that rebels against their organization or university department, and they can't go public themselves, they are going to have gold and diamonds to leak to people like us. Shifting from that to the climate science aspect of the new book, which has a lot about how the space weather effects on the atmosphere are rapid and global. We further part two of the supplement today with one on auroral triggering by space weather impact at the equatorial magnetosphere. Of course, it's excellent to see more confirmation of the energy going the other way from auroral excitement to equatorial atmosphere. And not only do we actually have two of those with this latter one, including the first ever report of plasma bubbles induced by solar storm electric effects, and no, I don't think they got lucky and caught what others missed. This is one of the symptoms of the weakening magnetic field differing and more enhanced plasma effects. Wouldn't be shocked if this becomes a regular observation from here. Lastly, folks, the bigger solar storms cause ground level enhancements, and while it may seem obvious, the field is still working out how significantly the atmospheric electricity is worked by those solar storms. Turns out it's a lot, including on atmospheric dust and electrical combination potential. That surge in atmospheric electricity, all the way to the ground, is one of the worries when our star super flares again on its regular cycle, which by the way is expected any time during the next three to four sunspot maxima. Folks, we are still on about a one week delay for items purchased at our online store, otf.cells.com. Remember, Cells is quitting Earth at the end of June. Get in there while we can. No, we are not looking for recommendations in the comment section to replace it, but we do greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.